is Trinity Sunday and Communion today. I'd like to welcome you to our online worship service here at Pakanak Community Church, United Church of Christ. Well, today I have a very short scripture passage to you and a very brief message. The passage is only five sentences long, but biblical commentator Len Sweet calls this the most important passage in the Bible. It's found at the end of Matthew, the very last chapter. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, this passage, it well be, well may be the most important passage in the Bible. It has two components, very important components, particularly for today. One, of course, is the Trinity. Um, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These are the three persons of the Trinity. And if I, you think of um, the Trinity, it's kind of a baffling, it's kind of a baffling thing. I once had a friend tried to show me what the Trinity was. We were in seminary and he, uh, he took three, three tennis balls and he was juggling them. He said, that's the Trinity. And I'm like, okay, uh, interesting, but didn't get it for me. This really didn't capture anything other than it was a, a clever way to show three, you know, persons being juggled simultaneously. Um, but the, the Trinity is a confusing concept if you try to theologize it. And uh, Augustine once told a story, St. Augustine, um, while puzzling over the idea of the Trinity, he was walking along the beach one day and he saw this young boy with a bucket of uh, ocean water running back and forth to pour the water into a hole he had dug. And Augustine asked the boy, what are you doing? And the boy replied, I'm trying to put the ocean into the hole. Then at that point, Augustine realized that he had been trying to do the same thing. He tried to put an infinite God into his finite mind. So if we look at the Trinity as and I'm going to speak about prayer here, just real brief. We have God, the parent figure, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when we pray, we can conceptualize the Trinity. When we're praying, we pray to God, who encompasses everything, the creator of everything, the, 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 the being the ground of being, as Paul Tillich would say, a theologian, that the essence of being. And then we have Jesus the Son who teaches us how to behave in the world, how to, what to do in terms of our walk through this life, you know, to heal, to, to do good, to, to love God and the neighbor as yourself. This is Jesus teaching us our way of being and then you've got the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the the motivator the inspirational force and the comforter and the comforter and the advocate the one who who's got our back so you've got this concept of the Trinity and this passage talks about the Trinity it also talks about Jesus being or having all authority on heaven in heaven and on earth, all authority has been given to him. And that too is a very, very important uh, idea. So when we think of authority and we think of inviting people into the, um, the tradition of Christianity and to teach them and to baptize them, 
each of us is invited to proclaim Jesus Jesus is teaching us our own in our own stories our own experiences and I think of uh, one example about inviting others into the faith or into the tradition um, a missionary came to one of the churches I was serving in it was in Bethlehem Pennsylvania and he his name is Jeff Mensendeek and he served um, in a community where the Fukushima uh, um, reactor had melted down and he said that he was before ten years prior to this he said he was there in the in that Japanese community there and um, they the people technically didn't trust him and it took many years to build up even a little bit of trust and what he had said really astonished myself and many of the listeners who were there and the listeners who were there um, he said that once the Fukushima crisis happened and the Japanese government was um, not telling the whole story about the level of uh, radiation poisoning and the danger but he and his fellow Christian missionaries remained in the community exposing themselves to danger and helping many of the people stricken by the disaster he said it wasn't until that point when they showed their solidarity with them as human beings that the, the community, the Japanese community, started to accept him and his, his Christianity much more readily. It doesn't mean that they were converted to Christianity, but at that, that point, in that way, they became uh, fellow travelers on a, on a spiritual journey of life. And I was struck by how his authority changed in the sense of from being authoritarian, you know, the missionary in another country, knowing all the right answers, to being with a community that was suffering and struggling. And as I close this message, I want to think about in our own America, we have 200 plus years of racism and we, rightly so, us white folks are, may not be trusted by the African American community because of our his, that history maybe by solidarity with them not maybe but really truly by solidarity with them by by walking with them by living with them in in a sense of uh, trying to understand their plight and their pain and by I would think this this century maybe this decade I would pray this decade to put an end to racism, to stand in solidarity with our African-American brothers and sisters, put an end to racism. We have authority from Christ to, to obey everything he has commanded us. He didn't command us to divide and to segregate people. He commanded us to Love God and love our neighbor as ourself. So now let us together, before we have communion, confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Would you join me? Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now trusting and delighting in you, which in you, dear Lord, we commend our lives into your loving care as we offer our prayers in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you from here on and forevermore. And may the authority of Christ rest on you so that we follow his teachings unto life eternal. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, and on that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Do we hunger and thirst for God? We seek the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Christ be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In ancient days, you created us in your image and called us to be your people. Even when we turned away from you, you called us through the proclamation of your law, the words of your prophets, and the wisdom of your poets and storytellers. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Christ Jesus, to call to us yet again on the shores of Galilee, in crowded markets, and on dusty roads, inviting us to risk all and to place our trust in you. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who gathered his disciples and shared a final meal with them, calling one and all to remember and celebrate with him his life and work with them. He taught them to listen for his voice and to follow him even when all hope seemed lost. And so on the night in which he gave himself up, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We come to his table, remembering how Jesus took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my life in the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts of love and grace in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as we proclaim the great mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ shall come again. Would you join me now in the blessing of the bread and cup? Therefore, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ and make us all members of the body of Christ nourished for the healing of the world. Amen. The bread which we break is the sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in Christ's outpouring of love for the world.
Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ Jesus. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen.